This is the 2023 Honda Ridgeline. It's the black edition trim level that we're going to be taking a look at today. And we're going to answer the question, is this the ultimate gentleman's truck? While there are a lot of people who will say it's not really a truck, well, it really doesn't matter where you fall because the people who say that are not owners. Read the comments and you'll find out that the actual owners of these Ridgelines are always singing the praises of their trucks. Just like any vehicle out on the market, are there areas for improvement? Absolutely. But we're going to hit on the highlights of what this truck offers today. Being the black edition, if you're not aware, it does come in more colors than black. As Sonic Gray on this particular model shows with the black interior. You're also going to have the black accents around the vehicle with the black trim. Uh, the jet black interior with the red accents, which I probably will have to show you from a different angle than what we have right here. Also the red ambient lighting and the badging on the exterior of the vehicle. As far as functionality goes, you're going to find the LED headlights and the LED fog lights, which are down here on the lower portion of the bumper. We're going to have the air curtains built in to the front in here to help improve gas mileage. The black edition badge, as you can see down there on the gloss black grill. And under the hood, at least for the time being, is the loan option 3.5 liter V6. It makes 280 horsepower, 262 pounds feet of torque, and it's mated to a nine speed automatic transmission. As we move to the tires, this is a standard all-wheel drive vehicle. When I say standard, I'm not talking about the transmission, obviously. Yes, people ask questions about things like that. Tire size, how about that? 245 on the width. That's going to be the tread pattern right here. And the sidewall size, this area is going to be a 60 series. That's part of what contributes to a smooth ride quality in addition to the independent rear suspension. 18 inch black wheels is what we will find the tires surrounding. And let me do one thing just so I can show you what's going on here because I know a lot of you like to know if there are turn signal indicators built into the side view mirrors. Well, let me turn those on just so you can see them in action. They are power adjustable, but manually folding side view mirrors with the gloss black. They are heated and you also have the nice remote. Let me dig into my pocket and see if I can find that in a timely manner. There you go. And the main thing I know people like to know about the remote, does it have remote start? As you can see, it most certainly does. And one thing I need to make sure I cover here before we move on, MPGs. We talked about the 3.5 liter V6 that's under the hood. Well, what kind of gas mileage does it get? We're looking at 10 city, we're looking at 18 city, 24 highway, 21 combined, and 4.8 gallons of gas for every 100 miles driven. And here we can give you a good view of the red accents for the interior. You'll see this in a few different places, depending on how the lighting is around the truck. Now, let's talk a little bit about functionality. Being the potentially ultimate gentleman's truck. Well, you know what? The ultimate gentleman can throw the ultimate tailgate party. And there's a reason why I say that would be the case with this truck. You do have the conventional style tailgate. You're going to have a bed liner. That's always good. A lot of trucks at a much higher price point do not come with a bed liner. Multiple tie down points, as you can see. You also have interior lighting, but that's not all. I'm going to open the tailgate with the second option that we have here, which is going to be like this. And there are a lot of advantages to this, not only making it easier to gain access to the bed back here, to all of the space in this area, but also to gain access to what we have right here as far as our power outlet goes. We have a little bit of space here, but that's not all. We also have the lockable bed trunk, and you talk about the ultimate multitasker. You can see that you have a lot of space in here. You have the removable partitions right here that can separate things out and make it a lot easier to, well, you can fill this whole area with ice. You can actually take all of those out if you want to, but you can fill the area with ice. You can also ice down your drinks, snacks, all that kind of stuff. 
and right under here, I don't know if I can do this with this little tray being right here. Let's see if I can do it. Well, the answer to the question was no. I had to remove the tray out of there. But here's what we have. When the ice all melts down, you know what? You can drain that. That is very useful in a multitude of ways. And not only that, but having the ability to swing the tailgate open, as you can right here, also makes it easy to gain access to this area where the spare tire is located. And you have the tray bolts right here that you're going to have to loosen on both sides. It's very easy to do. And just a little tip for you, when you take those out, if they're as easy to get out, at least that one was easy to get out. Let's see if the other one is easy to get out. That is an unusual thing. Typically one is much tighter than the other. Maybe some of the folks have been listening to my videos, watching my videos and realizing that they didn't need to tighten those up so much. And when you don't over tighten the tray bolts, it makes it easier to slide the tray out that contains the tire, the spare tire, the tools to change the tire. If you ever run out of gas, you're going to use that to stick that down into the capitalist fuel fill in the gas tank area. And then it's easier to fill the gas tank back up that way. But the thing about it with those tray bolts, if they're over tightened, it's very difficult to get them out. If you have that issue, you'll know what I mean by that. But you can see the functionality that's built in back here. And you can also have the in-bed audio. So again, the ultimate tailgating truck in a multitude of ways. What gentleman doesn't have the ultimate tailgating truck, right? And yes, like a gentleman, I did not over tighten those tray bolts. And by the way, let's talk about usage. How practical is this truck? 3,500 to 5,000 pounds is what it can tow. The payload comes in between 1,509 and 1,583 pounds. The gas tank size is 19 and a half gallons. One thing I do like that Holmes Honda did not do here is adding the side steps, which really aren't necessary for this truck because it's just not that high off the ground for one thing. And this truck does have some light off-roading capabilities, especially being all-wheel drive, but you are going to decrease those capabilities with the side steps down there. This truck has a reasonable amount of space within the cab, within the interior. I'm gonna have the cup holders on the door bins right here or excuse me, on the door panels, I should say, because there are no door bins. And something else I like here, I'm gonna raise the seat cushion up. Let's see if I can do that one-handed, kind of hard to do, there we go. So you can see that you can do this on both sides if you want to, I'm only gonna do it on one side, but you can see the capability there to actually help out with space if for some reason there's something you don't want to have wet in the bed, it's raining outside, that's an easy deal. There is a tonneau cover, a bed cover, that's actually available for this truck as well. So we'll hop on inside here. We do have the power rear window, the fold down armrest. Let's see if I can fold that armrest down one handed. And something I really like about this armrest is that even when the cup holders are in use, it's still an armrest because of their location. See what I mean? If they were up here like they normally are, well, you wouldn't be able to put your arm up there. You do have the dual air conditioning vents here in the rear and some connectivity options down there in the form of two USB ports. I would love to see Honda add a third USB port in the future because obviously you have seating for three passengers back here. And if you're a gentleman, you're going to let your passengers know that while the rear doors don't have door bins, even though I kind of slipped and said that earlier, it was just a tongue twister, an accident, but maybe a brain twister, right? But you do have door bins to make up for that here on the driver and the passenger side door, as you can see here. So the lower and the upper door bin, the red contrast stitching kind of carrying through with that red theme as far as the trim goes within the interior. You do have the power adjustable seats for the driver and the passenger. Both are heated. Unfortunately, here in the United States, it isn't very gentlemanly to not give us ventilated seats, but you give it to Canada. So come on, Honda, give us some new ventilated seats for 2024 if the Ridgeline is going to be redesigned to match the Pilot. I hope we'll see that. Nice large glove box here. No gloves inside, but you know, you can put a lot of glove box or gloves in the glove box if you want to. You have some gloss black trim, as you can see on the door, and that's gonna carry its way here into the interior. 
a nice wireless charging pad right there. You can have room up here to put, well, maybe a cell phone up there if it will fit. There is more connectivity here in the way of USB and a 12 volt, and that's not the only place you're going to see that. We'll have the cup holders here, again, surrounded with gloss black trim, so watch out for those fingerprints, and the push button shifter. What do you think about that? A lot of people have varying opinions on that. Some like it, some don't. We're gonna have the nice garage door style lid for the center console. I have the suction cup in here for now. Before we take our test drive, we're just gonna keep it in there. And there is more connectivity. Like I said, another USB and another 12 volt within the interior of the center console. And something else that we didn't discuss yet, but it is here, is gonna be the conventional size sunroof. Depending on your situation, you may or may not like that, but there's how you're gonna control that and the rear power window or power rear window, maybe I should say that. And the conversation mirror is still here. Some of these vehicles from Honda are now not featuring the conversation mirror anymore. Tell me what you think about that. Would you like to see that in all Honda vehicles? I guess that depends on which one you want to buy. The vanity mirror is here with the lights. And let's see how far back we can block the sun out with this sun visor. It does seem to go back pretty far, probably far enough, unless the seat is very far back and extremely reclined. I think that's going to get the job done. Here on the driver's side door panel, we're not gonna see a lot of additions compared to what we saw on the passenger side. Some of those things that you obviously would know are going to be here as far as being able to control the windows and the locks and all that good stuff. You can also lock and unlock the windows. One thing for a truck that's $48,315 on the sticker, you have seat memory for the driver. You should also, at that price point, at least in my personal opinion, have that on the passenger side. And then your features here as far as what you can do safety feature-wise, several things you can turn on and off. Here's where you're gonna control those power adjustable side view mirrors. You can turn your econ mode on and off and you can drop this lever right here to adjust the tilt and telescopically adjustable steering wheel. Now we're gonna get into a little bit more of the features and functionality of what the driver will find. A nice looking instrument cluster here. It may not be the latest and the greatest as of 2023 from Honda. We'll just keep our fingers crossed to see what Honda does for 2024 as far as the ridge line goes. Still no word on that, but we're going to wait and find out. There is everything you're going to use to control the lighting on and around the vehicle and to use your blinkers because you're a good, safe driver and you care about letting people around you know what you're doing before you do it. Well, some of you do at least. And the shifter paddles to work your way through that nine-speed automatic transmission and the steering wheel mounted controls. I probably don't need to tell you too much about what is there, but you do have a nice leather wrapped, partially leather wrapped steering wheel here. It is comfortable and we have the start stop button for the engine. And some of that red accent, the red interior lighting that you'll see here on the display, you do have built-in navigation. A lot of people ask about that. Well, now you know that it is there. A lot of easy to use or easy to learn. If it's your first time stepping into a vehicle like this, features and functionality, you do have several different screens here. But here's the thing, you might wonder, well, why is there nothing on those screens? If you wanted to, you actually can move these around. So let's see if I can get that to work for me. Here we go, and we'll just move that to another screen, just so you can see what can be done there. I know that's a little bit different, but if you wanted to move things around from one screen to another, well, you easily could. Yes, I am going to put that back. You can go into your settings and make several changes if we can get that to come up with the vehicle as far as what you can see right there. Pretty easy to figure out, pretty easy to know what's going on here. You can change different settings with the vehicle and then we can always go back very easily and take care of the rest of what is there depending on what you need to do. You do have the multi-view rear view camera and three different views depending on what you need to do. The dual zone climate control is managed right here. As you can see, pretty simple to do that. And they're the heated only seats, something we don't need any longer, at least for the next several months here in Northwest Louisiana. So earlier I showed you that I had my suction cup in here. What are we gonna use that for? I'm going to suction cup the GoPro to the sunroof right here, obviously. 
this. Okay, yes, just so you know, that's where it's going. So we can take our test drive. And I told you I was going to put that icon back, and I wasn't kidding. And one more thing I do want to cover, two things here. You can turn your auto stop start feature off right here, and you do have driving modes here. What exactly are those? Well, you can see normal, snow, mud, and sand. You also have the D and the S right there. And while some people will say the S stands for sequential mode, it's basically just sport mode. Okay, we're going to get out on our road on the road for our test drive, and I'm going to do something here. The ultimate gentleman's truck should have a nice quiet ride quality, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drive in both lanes because I had somebody ask me to do that in a recent video, even though the left lane is probably not going to be as, as loud as the right, but we'll go ahead and try it anyway. So I'm going to be quiet and let you listen. I will be driving at 65 miles per hour in both lanes, and we'll give you a little bit of a road noise test. Okay, I don't know how well you can hear that, but hopefully that works out. I also don't know how well you can see the speedometer, the digital speedometer that I have here on the dashboard. But yes, I was doing 67 actually, instead of 65, but it's okay. Hopefully that does a good job of giving you an idea that the wind noise is not bad, at least not for me while I'm sitting here in person on my lapel mic. I don't know how that picks that up for you. You might be listening with earbuds in or headphones or something like that. And so that will make a difference, obviously. But for the condition of this road, it's actually very quiet in here. The road noise is very well managed in this ridge line. That may not sound like it to you, but I drive this road regularly in a number of vehicles, and this is actually very quiet. So we get on a smoother portion of road here shortly, you'll see what I mean. But Overall, the Ridgeline is a very enjoyable vehicle to drive, 280 horsepower. That seems to be enough to get down the road. Now, the one thing I would still like to do is make sure that I get an opportunity sometime to do some towing, maybe put some weight in the bed, and just see what it's like to drive at that point. That's not always easy to do, especially when the vehicle's brand new. I don't think that Holmes Honda would be thrilled with me for hitching a trailer up to this brand new truck before somebody buys it. But who knows? We might get to do that in the future sometime. But overall, it's always an enjoyable experience to drive the Ridgeline. As you know, because of its smoother than typical ride quality for a truck, the interior is comfortable. I like the way the truck handles. It seems to do quite well. The technology here, while as of now is not the latest from Honda, you don't have the same look and feel and, and everything available as you do with some of the newer vehicles for 2023 and even some for 20, 2022 Civic, just one. Okay, I was going to say some, but we'll just say one because that was true. It was one. Now we have several for 2023. But overall, the technology here here is still just as effective. It's easy to learn. It's easy to use. So if you've never had this kind of technology before in a vehicle, you don't have to be scared of it. It's very easy to adapt to. And you might say, well, Tom, you've been doing this stuff for a long time, right? Well, keep in mind, I had to learn all this at some point myself. And for me to be able to adapt to it as quickly as I did, you know, I think anybody can do that. But overall, a very enjoyable truck to drive. Easy to get around, easy to see out of. It's um, definitely maneuverable compared to your average mid-sized truck. Let me make sure I throw that out there. This is not a full-size truck. And I say that, you might think, well, you don't even need to say that, Tom. Well, I've had people compare the Silverado <laughs> to the Ridgeline. Uh, that's actually quite laughable, but I guess not everybody realizes that the two do not compete by any form or fashion in any manner. Overall, if you're looking for a nice mid-sized truck, easy to get in and out of. It still has the functionality and capability of a mid-sized truck. A little bit of light off-roading capabilities. It is all-wheel drive, so it's very good if you live in an area where you deal with a lot of snow and ice. 
Uh, being that it's all-wheel drive, it doesn't have a snow mode, so there's a lot of advantages here that you're definitely going to find that, well, if you're not familiar with the Ridgeline, may be a little bit of a surprise. So tell me what you think down in the comments section. Is the 2023 version of the Honda Ridgeline the ultimate gentleman's truck? This being the black edition, it's the highest trim level, so you're definitely going to get as much as possible here as far as features and functionality go. Tell me what your thoughts are about the Ridgeline, and if Honda is redesigning the Ridgeline for 2024, what do you hope to see change? Got to say a special thanks to my friends here at Holmes Honda for loaning me this Ridgeline Black Edition for the day. And a special thanks to all of you for being kind enough to give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn about other vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the video that's on the screen right now, and I will see you there.